بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, in this session we will address uh, سورة التكوير. Uh, سورة التكوير is a مكّن سورة. Uh, this is an agreement amongst the scholars. There is no difference of opinion regarding it being a مكّن سورة. It's one of the surahs, uh, one of the uh, few surahs, or the initial stuff Allah, one of the initial surahs uh, that were revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was uh, said that it's either the sixth or the seventh surah that uh, was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Ashur said it was revealed after Fatiha and before Surah Al-A'la. Uh, its name, the majority of the tafasir uh, mention only one name for it, which is at takwir some say uh, or call it ida shams kuwirat but uh, this is just quoting the first verse of it so we'll just go with the name uh, at takwir uh, reason of revelation uh, just like many other verse uh, surahs in the quran as a surah as a whole it doesn't have uh, a reason for revelation however a portion of it uh, which are the verses uh, at the end لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم ما تشاءون إلا أن يشاء الله رب العالمين الطبري uh, quoted Sulaiman ibn Musa saying uh, <coughs> when the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal لمن شاء منكم أن يستقيم for whomever amongst you wants to maintain a straight path Abu Jahl said this was revealed talking about us if we want it we had the choice we would either take the, the path or not. Then Allah Azza wa revealed, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ You will not will unless Allah Azza wa the Lord of the world's wishes. Uh, the tafsir of the surah, the, the, the core or the theme of the, the uh, surah uh, revolves around two things, establishes two matters. The first matter is the matter of uh, resurrection and the day of resurrection, the fact of resurrection and the day of resurrection. And the other one is about the message of Muhammad, the revelation sent down upon Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tirmidhi Rahmatullahi Alayhi reported, and it's classified as authentic by Sheikh Al Albani and narrated by Ibn Umar. Uh, he said that the Messenger وسلم, said, Whoever would like to see the day of resurrection as if he's watching it with his own eye, then let him recite. Uh, just like uh, the Meccan verses, this revolves about establishing uh, the fact of resurrection. And if you notice, every single uh, surah we've uh, spoken about so far, Amman, Nazi'at, and Abbas, they all address the issue of resurrection and the day of judgment, different details, different events, different things, that, but it all revolves. And the reason behind this continuous repetition, and as we said in the introduction of Tafsir in the very first session uh, of this course, we said that this is the nature of the Meccan surahs. And this is done for two reasons. Number one, for the importance of the matter, the matter of resurrection and the day of judgment, and for the need of people for such knowledge and such a reminder. You see, people tend to forget and they need to be repeatedly reminded and that's why these verses come as reminders to us about the fact that we will one day die and we will be resurrected and we will face the consequence of what we did in this life the surah starts with verses that talk about the events, the introductory events uh, to the Day of Judgment. S the first six verses speak about things that will happen immediately before the, uh, 
the day of resurrection, and the ones after that speak about things or events that will actually take place after people have been resurrected. The first set of six verses uh, talk about like a, revolu a cosmic revolution. Things in the universe will change drastically. Nothing remains the same. Nothing will remain the same. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun is wrapped up in darkness. Now, this huge planet, the sun, which is the source of heat and light for us, on that day, as Tabari said, it will be folded. Kuwirat is made to make something in the shape of a ball, to wrap it up and make it in the shape of a, uh, of a ball, right? And the, the effect of that wrapping and rounding of that sun will make it lose these two effects. It's light and it's heat. At-Tabari said it will be folded and wrapped up and then thrown. And thus it would lose its light. Abu Huraira said, and this is uh, narrated, but reported by Al-Bukhari, that the Messenger وسلم, said, the sun and the moon will both be folded up and wrapped on the day of judgment. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ And when the stars fall scattering, Ibn Abbas said, the stars would lose their lights and then start falling down on earth and scatter. Ata said, the sky will start raining stars. Can you imagine? We can't perceive what's going to happen because we as human beings don't know the number of stars that are out there in the universe. So imagine that sky, instead of raining heavily with water, it would drop stars. What's going to happen to earth? What's, what kind of sight is that? I mean, when people actually see this happen, what happens to their hearts? وَإِذَا الْجِبَالُ سُجِّرَتْ And when the mountains are removed. On that day, a great shake will happen to earth. Mountains will be extracted, uprooted from the roots. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will turn them into heaps of loose, of loose sand. And other narrations or other scholars stated or described that they will become like dust. And then Allah Azza wa will make them scatter by sending a wind on them. All of these things happening before people's eyes. The sun, the stars, things in the heavens, things on the earth. It's an introduction to something that is serious. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ And when full-term she-camels are neglected. Ishar is a description or a name given to camels that are 10 months pregnant. Now Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing, addressing the Arabs, particularly the Quraysh at that time, uh, with something that relates to them. See, the most precious of wealth at that time was having camels, right? And the most precious of camels is that 10 months pregnant she camel. Allah Azza wa Jal is telling people that on that day, due to what is happening, this precious wealth will be neglected. No one will take care of it. No one will care about it, let alone take care of it. And that naturally reflects 
how scared people will be, the fear, the extent of fear people will be experiencing that would distract them from this precious wealth which they strove hard in their life, worldly life, to obtain. Right? Just like, for example, someone tells you uh, a ton of diamonds, for example. How long would someone work to collect a ton of diamonds? I don't know. It probably needs generations, right? Imagine that being neglected. You pass by it, you don't even look at it. You don't care if it exists or disappears. Why? Because your mind is busy with something else. وَإِذَا الْوَحُوشُ حُشِرَتْ And when the wild beasts are gathered, they will be gathered from different places. It will come out, collect in one place, and they will not act as they naturally do, attack. They will not. Because their, their state, they're seeing things that are scary as well. They will not attack man. Ibn Abbas said, Allah will gather them and then later will judge between them. If an animal attacked another animal, Allah will give the right of the attack from the attacking animal. This is between animals. So we need to be careful about people's rights. And we, we need to remember that no matter how minor we think that right is, it will be taken back. But in the hereafter, it's not going to be in terms of dollars and pounds. and It's going to be in hasanat and sayyat. We'll be losing out on a much more precious wealth than worldly material. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ And when the seas are filled with flame. The scholars of tafsir mentioned two things regarding this verse. At-Tabari said, seas will, will uh, overflow. Seas and oceans will overflow and they will mix with each other on that day. The salty with the sweet water, they all become one. Ibn Abbas said, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal will kindle it or set it on fire. Will set these seas on fire and water would turn into fire. Ubayy ibn Ka'b said, these first six verses speak about events that will take place at the end of time before Allah Azza wa Jal uh, resurrects people. And if you notice the rhythm of, of the surah, the, the shortness of the, uh, of the verses, as Meccan verses are, uh, they're very short and they're very fast. And they're talking about things that are going to happen very quickly and drastic changes that, that will take place in the universe, in the heavens, in the earth. Again, warning people from that day. Brothers, continuously talking about this should touch our hearts. It should have an impact on our hearts. Notice, we, we've been talking about, this is the fourth surah. And they're all addressing the same issue. With different details in each surah. This is to tell us, take this matter seriously. Work for these days. Work for these events. Make sure you rescue yourself. Make sure you protect yourself. There are two places people will go to. Choose the one you want here. Work for it here.
we ask Allah's protection. Let's conclude with these six verses now uh, and continue in the following session, inshaAllah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ilaha illa 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 illa.